Welcome back to Learning Solidity. Now in this tutorial, what I'm gonna cover is essentially event logging and extracting the transaction information. Um, to jump pretty much straight into this, uh, just to cover the basics, um, all I'm gonna do is create a contract where you can actually just simply send um, a transaction to without actually specifying any functions. So that's probably a little bit of a concept that I've not actually covered previously, which I'm gonna cover as part of this. And I'm also going to sort of implement things I have previously covered to kind of create an all round sort of transactional uh, contract. So jumping straight in, let's create our new transaction. Um, let's call it transaction. So start with pragma, solidity, and then I type and zero point four point zero. Right, so let's create a contract and call it transaction. And what we want to do first is we want to create a function where you don't actually have to invoke it um, or specify which function you want to invoke. All we simply want to do is be able to jump on like uh, my Ethereum wallet or an Ethereum wallet or something along those lines and simply send it Ethereum. We don't want to have to do any function calls or anything. So it's a simple case of just entering obviously the amount of Ethereum you want to send and an Ethereum address. Now each contract has an Ethereum address and this address can actually be accessed by um, address this. So if you ever want to find out your contract's address, you can do so by that means. That also is a great way of limiting the functionality outside of the, the contract store. Even the, you can prevent the owner from having that level of uh, modification. But I'm not going to go into that in too much detail. Um, in regards to basically extracting the transactional information though, um, what I'm simply going to do now is create a what's known as kind of like a fallback function. And we create the fallback function by simply stating function, no function name, open close brackets, and simply state it's payable. Now this is our fallback function. So essentially when we create our, our contract, we have this fallback method available to us now. That simply means that we can interact with this function without actually having to specify a function. So anyone on the Ethereum blockchain chain now, if they know the address of our contract, can simply just send Ethereum to our contract. So let's jump a little bit more into our fallback function and it's let's extract a little bit of information. So to kind of combine this with event logging as well, what I'm first going to do is define two event logging mechanisms. Now the first is going to be for logging the sender's address. So we do that by creating an event logger called starting with the keyword event, then specify um, sender logger, and it's a data type of address, so we specify that. Then we want to also extract the value that was sent to the sorry to the contract as well. So let's also state event uh, value logger and it's going to be a uint. Now we don't need to pass any parameters to this because with each transaction the message is available to us. Does it give you a little bit more of a scope of what is available to us with each of the transactions on the Ethereum network? Um, I will leave this link on the in the description box below. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore this uh, bit up here about the block. Um, this is essentially, this is more about information on mining. Uh, so if you wanted to find, for instance, the current difficulty or the last difficulty uh, of the, um, the last block mined or the current block number or the timestamp of when the last block was mined, you can do using that. And it's simply a case of just stating block dot uh, number or block dot difficulty or so forth. What we're gonna focus on now is message. Now there is something else that we can use as well, but I'm, I don't really, really want to go too much into because it's a little bit in essence deprecated. Now, for instance, you do have these TX, which essentially the transactional sort of um, bits of information available, such as the gas price of the transaction and the transaction origin. But essentially we should almost be in essence, be able to um, distinguish that from the message sender um, and also maybe not so much the gas price which i think is why it's still in place um, but we can see what remaining gas now when you send a transaction you can define if i'm correct the limit of gas that you are going to be applicable to be using so what you do is state i want to be using x amount of gas and um, this will tell you how much the the transaction has used so far and what is basically remaining 
You can also find out other information which is probably not overly useful to you, such as the complete call data. Yeah, that might be just to say, for instance, if you wanted to verify or validate your input. You have the signature, which again is a more of a, um, a validation thing because it's just the first four bytes of the call data. And then simply you have the sender, which is the origin of where the transaction began. Uh, began. And message value, which is the amount of ether being sent over the network. And then finally, I don't think I've covered everything. Data, gas, sender, signature, value. Nope, that is definitely everything. There is no more finally. I, you, there is now, but that is just simply a, a sort of like a quick way to just call timestamp. And that is, in a nutshell, what is available in pretty much every single transaction using Solidity. So, like I say, I'll leave that in the description box below. But, like I said, now is the time to sort of focus on our message. So as you saw before, we had the fallback method available to us. And all we're going to do is log the sender address. So sender logger um, message sender. And we're also going to extract the value from the um, which is being sent to our contract as well. So value logger, and that's simply referenced by message value. Sorry. So now we've got that, we can simply create our contract. We'll specify a value to be sent. So in this case, I'm going to send one Ethereum or one or one Ether. And then we can just click the fallback, which will simulate us essentially sending one Ether to that contract. And now we see the, uh, the origin uh, sort of address of the transaction, as well as the amount of Ethereum being sent over the network. I know you're saying you said it said one, but actually the value of Ether obviously is in decimals. And if you specify ether in the actual solidity contract so for instance um one ether it is in fact um like i can't remember if it's bill it's it's trillions or quadrillions or whatever the it's lots of zeros i haven't counted them um if you're interested and you want to see what it looks like just simply just see how many zeros are actually there or well, if you actually send something see how many zeros are essentially there i'm not really that bothered um now that is basic information being extracted from the uh, the transactional message. Now this uh, we have seen previously in the custom uh, modifiers. So essentially what you can do for this is you could also set up some sort of like predefined um, sort of modification uh, sort of parameters as well. So with our payable method, what we can simply say for our transaction is that we only want us to be able to access this transaction and it has to have a valid value. So first we're going to set up um, an owner. So like previously before, address, uh, make it private and call it owner. Then we simply need a way of specifying it. So we're going to use the constructor of function transaction. And then that is simply it because then we specify our owner by owner equals message sender which that only gets that should only ever get called once by yourself it should never be called again now after that what we need is two modifiers so create the first modifier that's not modifier right and that's going to be is owner and then that is simply just going to be um, I can try to remember the error calls in this assert revert and require that's what i was after require so owner is equal to message sender and then the function call so again we have another modifier uh, valid value and in this one it's just simply going to be a, quick, a case of assert that message dot value is greater than or equal to let's say one ether and function call. So with that, it's payable. It must be an owner. It must be invoked by the owner, and also it's got a valid value. So now, if we create that, we can, as the owner, send at least one ether or more. So that's fine. If I try and send less, say for instance 0.1, clear that and send again we get an error which is fine is what we expect but also then if we use a different address and try and send one ether just clear that up again again we have an invalid input 
So then let's just validate that finally by just switching back to our original address with one and everything is good. So that's a way of being able to sort of limit acts or sort of create a way of, com of communicating with your contract without any functionality required using the payable technique. Extracting information from the transaction message using obviously the message or TX if you prefer to use them. And then finally we covered the basics of how to output um, events essentially using our event logger which is what we managed to debug here. Now that is pretty much it for this tutorial. Now if you found this useful, uh, feel free to give us a thumbs up if you had any questions or want to correct anything. I know I'm not 100% correct on each, every one of these. Um, feel free to leave a comment. Obviously it helps out if you subscribe. And with that being said, I hope you found this useful and I'll catch you next time.